Welcome back to Vegas Live with Nina and I'm Nina on your host. Do I have to tell you where I am or can you guess by now? You know we've been here um, this coming November it'll be five years at the Pepper Mill Lounge. Absolutely amazing as you know they are my sponsors for this show and they have been for the five years and uh, we help each other of you know especially now with this pandemic it's like crazy. Um, as you know my show is very very open I inter uh, interview everybody out there whoever comes to be interviewed wherever they're from or whether it's politics or whether it's religion it does doesn't make any difference to me. I'm kind of down the middle because that's what I have to be. Um, Kerry Buck, congratulations. Um, Kerry Buck is actually in politics, and that's probably why I just said what I said. Um, and you're running in you're the fifth district? Yes, State Senate District 5. State Senate District 5. Now, also, I had Dr. Steve on last week, and this is such a coincidence because I very rarely do, you know, get into people that are running, but it seems to be happening because it's very close, right? Yes. And he is in <laughs> District 9. He is in District 29. Yes, oh, 29. Assembly District 29. Uh, basically, State Senate District 5, and then there's 20, it's Assembly District 29 nestled in with Assembly District 21 in okay. my state Senate In your district. state Senate. Mm -hmm. And I just overheard a, a conversation with my producer, and um, you said this is something new for you going into politics. You are actually a teacher, and I've had a fabulous story about you and teaching and the younger generation. Um, what made you, which you're still doing teaching, which I'm not probably doing it right now. I don't know what's going <laughs> on. Don't they? Not only have any schools, which I think they should open up schools, my personal opinion, um, to get the kids, you know, to get keep them together, even if you keep them apart. You know, they're, they're apart anyway in school. Anyway, so you're running. What made you go into politics, and is this your first time? So I ran in 2016 against oh. a long-term incumbent, and I lost by less than 1%. <gasps> but I'm trying, I lost by 469 votes out of 55,000, but I'm trying to uh, get in to make a greater difference. I've been wanted to be a teacher since I can remember, and I um, knew that Las Vegas was hiring teachers. 1,500 a year, and I knew I could get a job down that's here. a lot. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes, they need new teachers all the time. And so I came down here in 1996 to teach. And then I um, went into administration and became a principal of a little elementary school wow. that was one of the lowest performing in the state. And Is that the one where you had the trash cans outside? And yes. She, there's a story that she went into this school and she, she couldn't believe that this was an actual, it was a school where kids used to come where there was trash cans and a big dumpster and and it was disaster, no air condition, no nothing. And this is how the kids were taught of um, in America. Just because we're in Vegas doesn't mean to say we're not part of America. I know we're different in Vegas, but we're not that different, right? Right. The school was built in 1959 and it was going through major uh, HVAC rehab. And so it was quite a transition. It was in 2006. It was one of the lowest performing schools in the state also. And so over the next few years, we worked on building a culture of excellence and we were able to grow that school in 2013 to National Title I School. How amazing. That's great. So this is what you do. So when we're telling this story for a reason, and the reason being is because she's obviously running, you know, in, in District 5. And um, how's it going? Is it, is it, is, are you feeling good about it? I'm feeling really good about it. I think when people compare resumes and outcomes, I mean, in education, I have a doctorate in organizational leadership. I've been to USC Superintendents Academy, and I know quite a bit about education finance to help the state and improve student outcomes in the state. And so I hope to do that at the state level. When you compare my opponent's resume or just even in signage. Just meet her. Everybody just asks, meet her. That's all you have to do. Who you have is to... my opponent? <laughs> yeah, who is your opponent? And, and just meet this lady. She's absolutely amazing. But I think I, I did a show actually called Voices of Tomorrow. I did that for 16 years in Los Angeles. And it was all about children from the age of 12 and 18, and I gave them a platform of Voices of Society. So I know what it's like in the school system, most schools in Los Angeles. So I think going from the, the, the ugly school to the top 
top school, that shows your ability as running in politics to take all the movements that are going on right now to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I think, so What your, so your main thing would be schools, I would imagine, but what is it? I know quite a bit about um, education, because yes. then I went to charter school, I went to Pinecrest Academy and grew that to six schools, serving 6,500 kids and um, was their executive director or quasi superintendent. Yeah. Um, so I do know a lot about growing student outcomes and making sure that our students are successful. We're also working on a lot of workforce development. So we look at the job openings here on the Strip and around Nevada. There's a lot of jobs. And then we work backwards. And so oh. we build work streams from middle school on. For example, a lot of our students will have their pilot's license before their driver's license. Oh, um, so they're gonna fly first before they drive. That they, doesn't quite make sense, actually. They'll have their dual <laughs> enrollment certificate, so an associate's degree before their high school diploma because we make really good use of taxpayer dollars by yes. getting them enrolled in college, in college the last two years. So they, so they prepare. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm speaking out, but is this true that, well, I think I, I know it's true, that you don't have to have a four year at a university. You can do two years in the community college, which doesn't cost you that much. Mm -hmm. So you can save two years of college payments by taking the community college. And a lot of people don't know about this community college yes. thing. And um, now you can do it in high school. And that is really key see? because it gives them a jump start. Another thing that we're doing is there are several positions open on the strip for cybersecurity because there's a lot of hacking going on. Oh, the young kids know all about that stuff. That's easy. And so we build that work stream right from middle school, get them in a club, then work with CSN to get them their certificate. And then they're able to go get a starting get a job, job okay. at 55000 a year. Oh, how old are they? So they, right out of high school, so 18. 16, 18. Mm -hmm. So you can't really, can you work before 18? Do you have to get a, 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 a teenage passport or whatever? <laughs> well, um, typically it takes that long to get all of their certificates. Oh, I see. But so we, tr we do try and build internships early. Yes. Um, to get So they can have an intern. An exposed. internship is obviously not a paid job, but it is a job actually mm -hmm. on hands doing what they're going to go into. Mm -hmm. So when they do actually get paid, they really know the job they're doing yes I think what a lot amazing. of it too in workforce is do they know that to show up on time how to dress you know well, I how think to the dress part themselves. is the most important important because everybody's going around in shorts white little socks and flip-flops and tennis shoes that is a no-no Yes, yeah, so all of those skills employers look at and how to, how you present yourself. How you walk in a room how you sit yes. down be the questions time. you ask be on time and the your whole work bit. ethic Mm -hmm. So that's so you're definitely going into the younger generation as mm -hmm. as of. Um, how do you manage to get to, to get your students up in grades when you just mentioned this first school you you started, they were the the lower school, and so you got them. How did you get their attention? Because it's getting the young kids' attention. Yeah. I think that a lot of times um, kids just need parents and and children need parents. to know that you care. And it really is key to have parents. All parents love their children, but a lot of times they don't necessarily have the skills to make sure that they can help their yeah, children. Yeah, sometimes the children have to help the parents mm -hmm. yeah. because of uh, language and different things that go on. Yes. And so they have to help. They have to help each other. It's funny you should talk about that. I used to I used to do a show on uh, the, the Voices of Tomorrow, and I had this particular foundation. And they got the children, actually, to talk to the parents. So the children would come home from school and talk to the parents, rather than the parents saying, well, how was your day? They would say, well, how was your day? And it was really, a, and that was the, it was the greatest thing that's ever happened because they had this communication and the parents learned and the kids learned how to, you know, understand their parents. Because that's a big break, isn't it? The teenager time, yes. isn't it? It's mm -hmm. a problem, right? Yes. So yeah. what else are you running on? What else do you, what else do you see out there that, that you'd like to change? Well, I think after, you know, after COVID hit Nevada, it really has decimated, um, you know, all our economy. And so I hope to help rebuild that, help open it safely, um, ensure that we do open it safely so that we can keep it open yes. and get, and um, get our conventions back. I think it was a, a mistake to turn our convention spaces away um, and lower room rates because um, it's really hard to recover from that. We yes. need to I I 
ignite restart, and have restart, restart all that again. Because our you conventions. can still be. In, I mean, you can walk down. You can walk down Vegas Boulevard. And nobody is six feet away. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody is sort of on top. You go into the casinos, and I was in the in, in the Caesars. They were all together gambling and everything. Mm -hmm. And they do have try. But it doesn't work. But nobody's. Everybody seems to be quite happy. A lot of people out there. So I think sometimes we're concentrating too much. In fact, for the first time today, I heard on the news that I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to put a figure out there. 250 had the COVID, but they didn't all die of the COVID. They, and they gave the percentage out of the COVID. Mm -hmm. And I think they've muddled up all the people that have died and said it was COVID and it wasn't. And I think that's a bit of a problem. So people have this figure up there that it's the COVID that's done all this, but it's not. People die on other things, I think. Yes, I think we need to take it seriously, yes. but we still, we don't want to lose our civil liberties. No. And what I don't like is there's winners and losers. And so just the fact that I come in and order food and can sit at a table and eat a cheeseburger, that's going to protect me from COVID but I can't just go sit at the bar and that's not. So it's about opening safely. And yes, that's all it is. Yes. You understand, we Civil all understand. I mean, when we're walking down the street or we're walking somewhere, we see somebody coming towards us, what do we do? We go to the left or we go right. to the, well, how about the left and the right? And, and we'll avoid them. It's, and it's not avoiding them. It's mm -hmm. just, it's now, and I'm watching this, it's built into our minds now mm -hmm. that we kind of do this or we do this mm -hmm. or we, you know, it's quite, it, it's quite funny. And then you look at each other, you tell them you smile. Right. That's what I do anyway. I want to let them know I still acknowledge them. I still love them all. Mm -hmm. So how can anybody get hold of you um, to vote for you? So uh, I give out my cell phone. Uh, my cell phone is 702 five nine two nine seven four zero you can also look me up at votecarrybuck.com um, and read about me i'm married to a police officer he's a captain of a local police jurisdiction and my two oldest boys are in the military my oldest is actually a green beret army ranger i'm very proud of him wow, and thank awesome. him for his service yes when i was deciding to run or not i remember questioning oh do i have the time to go to carson city but i was like if my son can spend a year in somalia i can definitely go to carson city for five months and fight for nevadans that's and right. you can also email me at Carrie, C-A-R-R-I-E, Buck, B-U-C-K, um, at Cox.net. That's amazing. Absolutely wonderful. So I love what you're going for, which is the younger generation. So don't forget everybody out there to vote for Carrie. But also don't, don't forget that the younger generation, and remember this, they're going to be our future leaders. So let's treat them right. Let's understand them. And let's don't all keep calling them they're stupid and they know nothing because they are not stupid and they do know a lot, but it's up to all of us mm -hmm. to teach yes. them how things are. Always remember another thing, there's always like a 20 or 30 year gap between your child and yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're definitely going to have different uh, opinions on things. Yes. So <laughs> we have to also understand that as well. We have to teach the children. Carrie, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank and uh, I think thank it's amazing. Having. And uh, so I'm into politics. No, I'm not. I'm just interviewing. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, she's amazing. Absolutely wonderful. Thank and um, we'll see how we can get her to win. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with thank our next you. one. Don't forget, subscribe. Vegas Live with Ninon on YouTube. Take care. If you enjoy the last show we just did and all the other shows, don't forget to subscribe Vegas Live with Ninon on YouTube. We've got plenty more coming up and our guests are amazing. So don't forget to subscribe. We'll be right back. Vegas Live with Ninon.